Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our CACCE webinar as we uh, get to learn a little bit more from our Communications Excellence Awards winners. As you know, uh, we present these at our spring event, the Staff Leadership Development Conference. So we have several chambers who won awards with us this year, and uh, we are excited to hear from many of them this month. I am going to turn it over to Izzy West. Izzy is an associate member for CACCE. She has gone out on her own, uh, having her own company on communications and social media. And so it was her idea to help us with these webinars this month. So I'm going to let it turn it over to her and let her introduce you to the team from One Spartanburg and the piece that they won their award with us uh, earlier this year. I'm Izzy. I was at the April conference at, for CACCE. And I'm so proud to always see the award winners, but I'm also really curious which is why I helped instigate this webinar series. So I'm really excited to learn today from Naomi and Zach from One Spartanburg. They're going to talk to us about creating and communicating impact with their winning submission on the 2021 Year in Review by the Numbers. Hi, everyone. I'm Naomi. I'm VP of Communications for One Spartanburg, Inc. And we were very pleased to win an award from CACCE this year. Um, we are going to get started with telling you a little bit about our organization. And let me just, okay. So our mission is a little different than most. We are not just a chamber of commerce. We are also an economic development organization and a convention and visitors bureau. So our mission is to drive business, economic, and tourism development. Um, we have a shared services model. So our marketing team works across all three functions, as well as many of other of our in-house services like events, data, research, et cetera. So keep that in mind as we talk about our product, but I think everything we do is translatable to your organization, no matter what the scale of service offer is. So the document is a little different than an annual report. This is something we publish in January each year. And the goal of the piece is really to communicate some mission-centric KPIs. So those key performance indicators are important to our organizational stakeholders. Most of them are economic-related numbers, whether that be in the economic development, business development, or tourism development sector. So it's less about this is what we did over the past year as an organization and more about here's what the health of our economy looks like in areas where we have a significant impact. So we distribute this piece to all of our members via mail, uh, but we also distribute it at an event, an Outlook Spartanburg event that we hold every year where we gather people who are really interested in the economy. They are the primary audience for this piece. Um, it also goes to VIPs and non-member business leaders as well. And finally, we provide it to regional media outlets so that we can hope to spur some coverage of the different content that's in here about how Spartanburg's economy performed over the past year. I'm going to go into just a few highlights of how we picked the content that went in the piece. So one is selecting KPIs that were relevant, not only to our mission and our goals, but also to the audience, that primary audience that's interested in developing and growing our community. So from an economic development standpoint, 1.9 billion in capital investment, that is only investment that our team touched. So that doesn't include um, a business that may have opened that had no connection to our organization in any way. These are projects that our team worked with to ensure they could break ground in our community. 80% um, of those are new businesses, 20% expansions, which speaks to the companies coming into market rather than those just growing here. Um, and we like to translate that down to, okay, 1.9 billion is a big number. What does that actually mean? 5.4 million every single day injected into our economy from an economic standpoint. 2,200 plus housing units, we chose this number as it was really very relevant to some of our businesses' pain points as well as some of our economic pain points. Um, we know that to attract talent to our market, we need more diverse housing stock, both at the executive housing level and um, affordable housing. More housing stock prevents rates from growing and growing. So this was a piece we really wanted to highlight 
In the tourism space, increase in hotel room demand is one of the top pieces of interest for our economic investors. That shows how often people are coming to market, those people then going out into our community. And then for our businesses coming out of COVID, the unemployment rate, seeing that that's back under 3% for our community um, was something we really wanted to ensure that our audience knew since during COVID, like many others, that obviously spiked. These are all performance measures, not activity measures as well. So again, we're not talking so much about how many people we got in a room or how many networking events we held and things like that. It's all really about the greater impact of our work. So if you're not in economic and tourism development, you can still follow that same measure of choosing KPIs uh, that are really influential and impactful to your community rather than those activity measures of what you did as an organization to get there. The second piece we included was storytelling testimonials. Data is great and we need it. We are a data-driven organization, but we need to humanize that data. So translating some of those different data points by adding context and providing credibility from third-party sources. So it's not just us talking about ourselves and the work we've done in our economy, but others. So in the top here you've got Mark Peters. He is the single largest out-of-market investor that's purchasing and developing land in Spartanburg right now. That speaks directly to that housing growth data point that was it was paired with. So taking that data and showing that Mark Peters, one of these investors, this is his feel about our market. This is why this data point is occurring. Um, and the same thing here with John Montgomery talking about the demand for industrial and office space and how that related to the increase in spec space that we shared and the increase in office space that we shared. Um, and then on the tourism front, again, here as well, coming out of COVID, having a testimonial to the health and safety and the return to hosting meetings in market and the impact that those meetings have on our surrounding community. The final one in orange right here is linked to our Bringing Back the Bird Business Recovery Fund. So that was another COVID program. Um, one of the data points we reported on was the amount of dollars distributed in our community. So tying that with a testimonial from one of the businesses who received those funds to really feel the true impact of what that data point means. And finally, we wanted to take advantage of, even though this is just a one page back and front document, we never miss an opportunity to say a little bit more. Um, so we did some top takeaways from our general organizational work for the year that goes beyond just the economic data. So some examples that I pulled here is our advocacy efforts. We had four significant wins in advocacy in the past year. So we wanted to highlight and say a little bit more about those. Um, the same with down downtown development with different companies moving into our office market. That's been a big focus for us for several years. So taking the opportunity to instill that into the audience and then keep it front of mind. Um, and then GSP, our local airport, which is a big tourism partner for us, they were named best small airport in North America. And we thought that was very worthy of our investors across business, economic and tourism knowing about Finally, we added this fun QR code to scan to see our new space. We opened a new office in September. So we had a party. It was slightly at the end of COVID still. So a lot of people hadn't been introduced to the space yet. So we used this as another opportunity to give people an interactive experience to engage with the piece. Um, and also then that led you to a web page where they can look and explore our building remotely. So that's a highlight of our by the numbers piece. Um, it is again, pretty high level compared to an in-depth annual report and very focused on our economic drivers and our KPIs. I am gonna hand over to my teammate, Zach, who is going to talk a little bit more about one of the ways, one project that led to creating impact, whereas this is more so communicating impact. Um, we also won an award from the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives this year as well. Um, and one of the data points is reflected in this. So, Zach, I'm going to hand off to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach. Like Naomi said, I'm on her team with One Spartanburg Inc. And uh, this campaign deals specifically with hospitality tax uh, revenue. Uh, we started the Remember Your Favorites campaign 
in order to drive local restaurant spending uh, to replace lost tourism revenue during the pandemic. Um, obviously, I don't need to tell you guys, everything kind of took a downturn in 2020 because of COVID. And we wanted to kind of drive locals and visitors even to as many local restaurants as we could. So we developed this campaign, remember your favorites, remember some of your favorite meals, remember some of your favorite spots. We built it out. Uh, it included a lot of social media marketing because we had clips like what you can see playing on the screen there. We had a lot of really good food photography that was able to really play well and get people enticed to go out and really, like we say, remember your favorites. Um, we also built out email and text campaigns, which went to both general audiences and to individual people who downloaded passes, but needed maybe a little reminder to get uh, the next check-in for their prize. It was a gamified system. So we were able to kind of contact people and make sure that they were able to get to say from four to five check-ins to earn that next prize. Uh, we also had some grassroots efforts, which included some uh, working with local influencers and social media uh, participants to highlight their favorites and get people to sign up for the pass and again make sure they redeemed it as they went to local restaurants. Uh, we also had posters which may not sound like a very big thing or like it took a lot of effort but it increased the visibility of what we were doing a lot. When you went in there we heard from several restaurateurs that you know people asked what is that? How can I take advantage of it? Are there deals? Are there specials? And a lot of places did have deals and specials built in, which of course made it even easier for people to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look at this image of the phone right here, it kind of shows you how the past looked. Um, you would receive a text or an email with a link that took you directly to your Remember Your Favorites password. You were then able to redeem discounts and check-ins at our participating restaurants, which um, varied from just about every kind of food you can have. So we tried to cover every kind of taste that was out there. Um, it was all local restaurants. We were intentional about making sure that we drove business to local establishments um, as we were all trying to kind of recover from the damage of COVID. Uh, sign up was free and it didn't cost anything. All you had to do was have your phone and visit the site and make sure to click the link and check in when you went to restaurants. And we had uh, incentivized, like I said, it was gamified. So at three different levels, you would be eligible for a prize, including uh, if you got 10 check-ins during the two month campaign, you were entered for a grand prize, which was a really nice and kind of expansive Spartanburg staycation pack. And at the time, you know, everyone was dealing with COVID and being kind of stuck at home or kind of just starting going back to the office. So we thought, that would be a good prize for people to kind of stay close by, but get to do something a little different, get to do something that is still safe and fun and enjoyable. Uh, and so the results, we actually, you know, we did pretty, pretty well here. We got 1,003 downloads of the past, which ultimately led to 613 unique restaurant check-ins. This was just a two month campaign. So we felt very good about driving that local business around Spartanburg. Um, the kind of the injection there, the money totals you see, that's assuming a twenty to forty dollar range for restaurant visit spends. Um, so we estimate that led to between twelve thousand three hundred and twenty four thousand six hundred dollars worth of injection into our local businesses. Um, and then we also these are just the measurables. So as far as you know, we're very confident that this campaign and its visibility led to people visiting local restaurants. You may have seen an ad that we had on Facebook and decided to go check out X restaurant and get something you hadn't had in a while, but maybe you didn't sign up for the past. Maybe you didn't feel the need to check in whenever you went to a restaurant, but we know that it did drive restaurant visits up from this campaign. And on the left of the screen, um, the repetition, we, you know, we liked this platform. We liked the way the, the past worked. So we built out something called the Spartanburger Trail, which is very similar. Um, we have, I think, 23 participating restaurants, each with at least one really delicious, unique kind of special to Spartanburg burger. And obviously it plays well with the Spartanburg name. Um, it is designed to be a long-term campaign. So like I said, remember your favorites was two months. This does not have any kind of timetable. It is designed to increase that hospitality tax revenue by getting as many people to go out and get local burgers as we can drive. So in, as you can see there, the 
incentives here are two vest, two restaurant visits, excuse me. Uh, you get a Spartan Burger Trail sticker. You go to four, you get a pair of socks. And if you get to five or more, you're entered for a grand prize, which features a lot of things from local businesses to help you make your own perfect Spartan Burger right from your own kitchen. Um, and like I said, this is all kind of a piece of what Naomi was talking about, designed to elevate our hospitality tax in Spartanburg by getting people out, supporting restaurants. We're past sort of the, the COVID recovery, and now we're really trying to drive business to another level. So yeah, we really wanted to tie together when you look at those big numbers, it's okay, well, what was our impact on those numbers? Each one of those numbers had countless programs, just like the restaurant pass that went behind helping ensure that number came to fruition. So when you look at it, it's just two pages, but countless programs and pieces of work behind those numbers that we're able to report on. Um, a few shareable resources, so the data sources that we used in the by the numbers piece, um, they're all available on our website at onespartanburginc.com forward slash data. I'll highlight a few of them. Um, we are lucky to have some paid data sources through our economic development arm. So those are things like Buxton, which is consumer spending, and Placer, which tracks people's movements through the community. And then we also use census data um, and Esri and Emery, Emmy, <laughs> those acronyms, <laughs> Esri and MZ, um, which are both tools that our regional partners have access to and provide us with data from. So you can explore on there all the different data sources we use. Um, QR code generator that, that you saw to scan to see our office. We use qr-code-generator.com. We use the pro paid version. It's really cost effective um, and it gives you a QR code that you can even if you want to change your URL, you can leave the same QR code on something and you can update it and you can also track how many people have scanned that. Um, so we use that all the time throughout our different campaigns since QR codes have made a comeback. And then third, bandwango.com is the technology that we use for the Remember Your Favorites and Spartanburger Trail campaigns. We're also using it for another pass right now, which is a savings pass to encourage our college students to go to local businesses. So that that's retail shops, restaurants, experiences that are college-friendly price points. So it's it's that is more of an expensive platform, but um, we found good use in it using it across our different functions. So that's a highlight of um, the Buy the Numbers product and then also our, our other Remember Your Favorites winning campaign. Um, and here's on the screen some key takeaways from Spartanburg because we never miss an opportunity to brag on ourselves. Um, but happy to turn it over for questions if you have those about either campaign. That was awesome. Thank you so much. A um, couple of questions I had. Um, Naaman, when you were talking about uh, the actual piece at the first um, and you had the testimonials on there, did you and your team handpick who gave those testimonials? I mean, did you kind of know what you wanted those to say and did you help them write those? So we did definitely handpick. Let me just yeah. pull that up again so they're in front of us yeah, yeah yeah so we certainly handpicked them again mark peters is the developer that's injecting the most into new builds in our market at the moment he's mm -hmm. got a project a significant downtown and a significant county project mm -hmm. so he, we chose him for that reason this Note was actually directly from him. It was something that we captured um, during a preview media interview with mm -hmm. him and a local journalist when we were announcing the project. Right. So we made note of that as he was saying it because mm -hmm. it was compelling to us. And we just asked his permission to republish that quote as right. part of this report. Um, John Montgomery, uh, that was the same thing that was linked to a media preview that we did for another story that we had teed up with a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Kesha Williams, again, that was her direct words. Um, she spoke at a press conference for us about the bringing back the Burke Recovery Funds and the impact of that on her business. Mm -hmm. So we have recorded that. So we were able to replicate that quote. Mm -hmm. Andy's, we did draft for him. Um, that was something we we knew what we wanted to speak to when we didn't have a good tangible that we could borrow from something else. So we drafted that for his approval. Excellent. Very good. 
All right. Any other questions? Izzy, did you have any questions? Yeah. Um, so still for the year in review by the numbers, I think it was so impressive because it was specifically about KPIs and not quote unquote vanity metrics. Um, but for those that are new to the industry, what types of resources or tools or just local things should people be looking for um, where maybe they don't know how to get some of those numbers that you that you did get, um, like the housing units, of affordable housing, unemployment rates, any other economic development? What are those generic resources? <laughs> Yeah, there are tons of online resources. Um, Coley is one that reports on cost of living. Um, again, Census Bureau data is helpful, but is often a little bit outdated. My biggest suggestion would be to reach out to your regional economic development office. So for us in upstate Carolina, that's the Upstate Alliance. Um, there's a regional office like that in most places, and they're generally able to pull reports from paid services for you that are relevant to, they can hone down on your specific county area. So um, that's how we get a lot of our information as far as like office and retail and multifamily supply. Um, we use that. I will also send that link out if, or perhaps y'all can send that link out to our data page so people can just click directly to the different data sources that are public. Um, but the economic development offices are the best resource and they're, whether they're connected to you or not, generally they're willing to share the data with you. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, tell me how um, your board reacted to this, because it seems like this is just really nice and clean and easy for them to kind of understand um, what they're really looking at. Um, and did you tell us that you are going to do this every January? Yeah, we do it every January. Um, they really like this piece. This was the first time we had done it as business, economic, and tourism under a new model. Mm -hmm. So it does look a little different than our past products. Um, they liked how easy it was to navigate the different sections because while we are one organization, uh, people have different interests. So they could easily find the information that was relevant to them. Mm -hmm. um, but also just seeing our greater impact on Spartanburg overall. Um, I think one thing we would do differently next time is um, if you see with the hotel boardroom and the revenue room demand, there's the little green up arrow there. Mm -hmm. We would put more of those in here next year to show the increase in impact. Um, it was a little tricky coming out of COVID to really be able to say like, oh yeah, we grew this because everything <laughs> was going up coming off of COVID years. Um, but that's, that is one thing that we think um, our board will be pleased to see different in the years coming. Um, and they also really like those testimonials and ask the same thing like, oh, did they really say that? Or did you write that for them? So they were really pleased to hear that those were authentic quotes. Fantastic. And is this housed somewhere on your website so it's easily accessible throughout the year? Yep, it's in a few places on our website. So right now it's um, on our main slider um, on our homepage. It's also on our menu. You can drop down and click on our data tab. And then on our main data hub page, there's also a button that drives you to this document. Fantastic. All right. Any other questions for Naomi or Zach? Um, so I will take a general question for either project. Um, so obviously this takes a lot of staff time or resources to do. Do either of these help um, with funding in either way or are they just projects that you do and you're able to do it because of your other existing funding? So they certainly help with funding. Um, we see our visionary investors on the bottom here. So this is, again, we never miss an opportunity to thank those partners for their contributions. Those companies are listed there, not because they necessarily impacted those numbers directly, but because they make our work possible. Um, and then for investor relations overall in each one of those function areas, seeing the strength of our economy is really important to the investors and them understanding that our work 
directly impacts that economy. Some people think of the chamber and it's okay, well, you're networking, you're doing this, you're doing that. And they don't often see all the behind the scenes work that we're doing for the economic impact of our community. Um, so having that opportunity to really showcase here's the mark we're making on Spartanburg beyond your specific member benefits helps with a lot of our larger investors who are more mission driven than benefit driven. Um, so certainly with that audience, it also helps us with um, companies that are considering coming into market for us to be able to say, hey, here's a snapshot of what Spartanburg's economy looked like over the past year. Here are some of the areas we grew in. Here's what other people are saying about our community. So beyond just funding our organization, it's really impactful as far as attracting investment to our community.